everyone, so this is part two of Adventures with Maytag. Also applies to Whirlpool washers too. So I have a front-loading Maxima MHW 5100 series washer, and I was getting FE8 RE3 errors on the display yesterday when I was doing laundry. Uh, and they basically, what that translates to is, you're screwed, throw money at Maytag. So uh, first things first, I checked the filter which is strategically placed at the center of the bottom of the machine um, you can see my other video for that and that wasn't it so the next thing on the list is the fill valves because when I um, ran the machine after cleaning the filter the hot water just kept running and running and running and even when I unplugged the machine it kept running and running and running so I had to shut it off at the wall um, and fortunately, I have these really easy to ma maneuver valves back here that are easy to get to. But gosh, that could have flooded my whole house. All because a piece of crap part failed. Um, on, and probably because Whirlpool saved a few cents on that. So anyway, I'm going to show you how to change this. And I'm going to show you my way to change it. So first off, I ordered the replacement part on Amazon. It was $42. Maytag and Whirlpool wanted $120. It was available in a few other places for as low as $80, but the $42 part looks the same and probably is made in the same factory, probably in China. Anyway, let me get this washer out of here. And what you're gonna need is you're gonna need a pair of pliers. You're gonna need either a T20 bit or a quarter inch driver and something to drive it with. And then you're gonna need a bucket to deal with the water that spills out. So let me get the washer out of here um, and then I will show you how I get the thing apart. Okay, so first things first, we got to get the lid off. And in order to do that, we're going to take this screw, this screw, and this screw out. And we also need to take the hoses off. So in order to take the hoses off, we want to have somewhere to put them so that when they drain, they don't drain on the floor. So let me get, um, see if I can find a place to stash my camera so you guys can see. I apologize, that's not the best camera angle, but the door is the best place for me to put this for now. I'm going to make sure both valves are off, and then I'm going to use my pliers to get these loose. And I don't think it's crap for my pipes because this house has all new PEX plumbing. When I bought the house, I redid every inch of the pipe and put in brand new PEX plumbing. And there's nothing in the little strainer, so yeah, I don't, I don't, I think it's just the valves failed because Whirlpool wants to make as much money as they and that means they're going to cut every single corner they can cut because the average person would have just called the Maytag repairman who would have come and promptly cleaned out your wallet. So once those three screws are out, you just slide this back and lift this up. Let me reposition the camera so you guys can see what I'm doing. All right, so what we're working on is right here, and we've got a couple screws to deal with. There's a screw here which secures the valve assembly, and then there's some wiring harnesses that we'll need to deal with. And then there's a couple of hose clamps down here that clamp these hoses, and the new valve came with new hoses, although they doesn't look like anything wrong with these. So I'm gonna see which one's in better shape, and that's gonna be the one that stays. So first things first, you need to undo the wiring, and Let's see. So I gotta get the camera mounted here. I gotta figure out how these actually work. Okay, so there's a little tab that you lift up and that lets this come out apparently. Yep, so boy, these are some weird plugs. So you lift that up. And that pulls that out. I'm gonna pull the other one out once I get the valve body out. So 
So you need to undo this little clip here. And the easiest way to do this is to squeeze it and pull from below. All right, so that gets that loose. And then what we're gonna do is finish taking these out. So you lift up and that frees the little clip and it may be a two-handed operation. Oh, there's another little clip here. All right, so we're gonna lift this up where we can get to it. And then you're gonna lift up with that and then just kind of work it out. So I'll let you see that over here, the, the little tab pulls up and then you just gently work the wires out. So there's one more tab we have to get loose and that's on the bottom. So we need to get this wire clip loose. And you can do it with your fingers like you just saw me do. Now, in my case, these hoses are nicer than what my replacement came with. So let me get the replacement and show it to you. So, you know, the colors are slightly different, but everything else looks the same. And these hoses, just look cheap. So I'm not going to replace the hoses. I'm actually going to take these off and put them on the new valve body because I think the um, old hoses are actually a higher quality hose. And I don't think there's anything wrong with the hoses, so why replace them? So to get this loose, you just All right, we'll stop and get back and be right back. Before I go too much further, I'm going to make sure these will actually come off here because the other ones are really hard to get off. Uh, and I don't know if I can get them off there. Pliers are being crappy because they're cheap Home Depot ones. All right, let's go get a real pair of pliers. Okay, so we got a pair of needle nose pliers, and these will do the job just fine. break these loose with a pair of pliers. But these are really on here, so. try the other end. We'll see if we can get it off of here instead because yeah it's not coming off the valve. Which, quite frankly this is a stupid, again it's another stupid design. course it broke the fill tub. Wow, that pisses me off. 
Looks like there might be a spare one, but yeah, that's a... <sighs> what a shitty design. saving a couple bucks in manufacturing. <sighs> yeah, the other ones just ain't coming off. Let me see how much damage I just did and how hard that's gonna be to fix. So yeah, breaking this little tube off this uh, dispenser cost me $155 with shipping. Ouch. So we're gonna put this back together step at a time. So first we're going to slide this in here and then just let that sit while we uh, work all these out and these just pop back in where they were. And it's important when you're doing this to watch your fingers because Whirlpool is also in the knife business and they make very sharp products. So that's in there. Now we're gonna snap this in, and then we're gonna snap that one in. So those are all back. Now I'm gonna put the screw back in here to retain the valve assembly. All right, so that puts that back in. And, you know, it's really irritating. So let me show you guys what I tried. I broke off this one trying to get the hose off of it. And the thing that's irritating is this whole lid is one single piece, but they don't sell it. So if you do what I did, you got to buy this whole assembly in order to fix it. God, that's irritating. Because, you know, this could be fixable for a whole lot less if they just sold the piece that broke or if they'd had the common sense to make this, the thing that's going to break, a separate piece. But no, no, that would have made a maintainable product. And Whirlpool's not really in the business of making things you can fix. They're in the business of selling you whole new appliances. So here we are. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start the repair process. So I'm gonna take out the, the tray. I can probably sell that on eBay because it's not broken. And then what you need to do, you need a driver for that and you need a Torx driver for this. No rest for the wicked and there are plenty of the wicked in here. Drop that in there. And there's another screw down here on the front that you gotta undo. And then I'll use that tool. Let me see if that got that loose. I think that got it loose. Oh, except for I've got the fill hose down here that you guys can't see. So there's a hose down there that has to be let go. And again, Maytag is also in the Japanese knife business, so everything they make is really sharp. my point this lid should have been a replaceable part it is a separate assembly and it's used to route the water to everywhere that they want it to go there's no reason that this I should have to buy this whole flipping assembly other than Whirlpool's greedy that's what it really boils down to 
This is a piss poor engineering design that's optimized for inexpensive production. There's no reason that these shouldn't have been replaceable parts right here. It's, I mean, this is obviously a point of failure because it's a molded plastic part subject to um, stress when you try to remove the hoses. And this should have been a repairable part, but yeah, they saved a couple bucks or 50 cents and um, now I'm having to spend over a hundred dollars because of their crappy design work. So whoever the engineer is, I hope you watch this and uh, I hope when you take your car in that you get taken to the cleaners like you're taking all your customers to the cleaners because this is a crappy design. So friends, I finally got this replacement part in that has these two little barbs that are broken off. And um, quite frankly, it's a miracle because they did a really crappy job of, of uh, you know, putting the, um, the the parts together. Anyway, I'm gonna attach the hoses before I bolt this thing in and um, try not to cut myself on this. So let me get situated here and we'll get going. All right, so we're gonna slide this under and that's your hot. And I, honestly, I don't think it matters which way We'll deal with these in a minute. Now, that's the fun of it. There's another hose down here that has to be attached. And uh, I don't know if there's a good way to show this one. So I'm just going to do it. So you've got a fill hose that's down here. And the trick is to get it on to this assembly without cutting your hand or damaging anything. And there's some little barbs that it has to fit over. And then you've got a little clamp that needs to be attached. And you know, this whole thing could just be a funnel which would be a whole whole lot easier to deal with but then you wouldn't have a cute little drawer with a bunch of stupid crap in it anyway I think that's on oh wow so one of the hoses that came with the replacement valves is too short and wouldn't you know it it's the one for the hot water which is the one we broke last time so I'll deal with that in a minute more saving all right so i've got my screws here get the two of them lined up.
So there's actually a place right here for this to slide on to. There we go. And I swore there was another screw. Oh yeah, there is. reason it doesn't want to engage in here. There it goes. It needs to be lifted up just a little bit in the front. So again we're going to start these gently. bit on all of their pieces. That would have been too easy. So this one's different. Alright. So that was $125 worth of damage that I did, but now we've still got to deal with the hose being too short. So hang on. So I got this back in. Um, I thought I was videoing it and I didn't. Um, the trick is there's a tab here you need to insert this into and then you need to lift it up a little bit as you push it forward. So the problem I have now is that the, the aftermarket valves came with the hoses on the wrong sides. So I gotta take this apart and deal with it and try not to break the fittings again like I did last time that caused me to spend $125 on that. So let me, let me get after this. All right, there, so that's loose. So now I'm gonna take the valves out. So I can get elsewhere. And you lift up on these to get the, the wires out. So. And. These are generally pretty easy to do. But here, needle nose pliers will simplify your life. Okay, so there's that. There's that. And so I'll show you guys what we're doing here. You just push this little tab in, which would be up. And then the connector pops out. So I got one more over here. That 
aftermarket connectors aren't nearly as nice, so off the counter we go. So the um, new part came with hoses, and it looks like, yeah, one of them's one of them's the right length. There are two different lengths of hoses here. Um, I'm going to take these clamps off. is going to be getting these hoses off of this. Yeah, I, don't, I just don't know an easy way, so. There it goes. I think these are crappy hoses anyway. One of these is longer. And this looks like just automotive hose. It doesn't look like anything special. They did give me two nice hose clamps, but I'm going to use the spring clamps because this is, quite frankly, this is what was in here to begin with. Ouch. I gotta go find a pair of better pliers. I'll be right back. So I've got some pliers that are quality and they're not cheap Chinese junk like the Robo Grip Craft from Home Depot that has a lifetime warranty that they don't actually honor. It's not like the old Craftsman where, yeah, if you broke, you just took it in, they gave you another one. Alright, so there's that. Let's just turn this and move it away. stationed. Because that'll be very difficult to the washer. So now let's go back to the washer. Alright, so First things first, we will hook up all the wires. And so we're going to just snap this one in. And then this one. And then that wire can go through there. And then this one goes in here. And this one just that pops up in there in a minute. All right, and that'll barely reach. So we're going to secure the valve housing. really short. Sure. 
All right, so the one definitely fits, and the other is just, it's a real squeaker. It does fit, but man, it's just a squeaker. What I mean by squeaker is like there isn't any extra space in there. And I want you guys to kind of see what I'm working with here. So I'm going to reposition the camera. So again, it's just really hard to get anything in here because this is probably not put together like this. And you want to watch your fingers because all this stuff bites. Again, this is really hard to get to because it's right under here. I mean, any number of other engineering solutions would have made this so much easier. Route the hoses over here. Um, it's just, you know, there's 12 different ways you could have done this, and all of them would have been easier to work on. But the people who design this don't ever have to repair it, so they don't give a crap. And all they look at is how much money can we squeeze out of people who own our appliances. And that's what ultimately destroys even great companies. And I think Whirlpool is in a better position than, say, GE. Hang on, I'll be right back. I gotta go find different fur pliers. Okay, so I gave up on this and I used one of the hose clamps and what I did is I tightened it from down here with a quarter inch driver on my drill. And so I think we're back together and we're ready to do an open lid test. So I'm gonna hook the hoses up and run the machine uh, and make sure there are no leaks. So, all right, hang on. All right, so I'm gonna turn the water on. Uh, I should have done that while I was back there. And make sure I don't have any leaks. And then we're going to power it up. Well, I guess we should put the soap tray back in. So what we really want to do is going to run through the drain cycle first and then it will um, fill with water yeah so we got water coming in so the new valves work so 
I'm gonna let this run and I'm gonna go get my groceries and bring them in. I just had those delivered. That's why my doorbell rang. I'll be back in a minute. All right, so it passed the test there. I don't see any leaks. I don't feel any leaks. So I'm gonna go ahead and I, I got laundry to do because I haven't had a, long, a washer in several days now because it took forever for FedEx to deliver the part that I needed. Anyway, hope this video helps you all and uh, be careful when you remove hoses from that so that you don't break anything. Have a great day.